If I told you 58% of men and one third of women share a common fantasy, but hardly anyone ever talks about it, would you honestly be surprised? No one ever talks about sex. I am here to fix that. We're gonna talk about it, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Cuckold Day. Almost 60% of men share this fantasy and very, very few of them are willing to talk about it, least of all with their wives and girlfriends. I have some theories on why that is. I'd be interested to hear yours. But in this video, I am gonna share with you exactly how to engage in a cuckolding fantasy to make your sex life better and juicier. And I'm gonna tell you exactly who cuckolding is not for and who should not try to make this fantasy into a reality. Plus, I'm gonna give you my very best tips to get the goodness and the juiciness out of this particular fantasy. Plus, I'm gonna give you my juiciest tips, whether or not you're actually gonna make this fantasy into a reality, to have it actually improve your sex life. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to take cuckolding fantasy and turn it into a life lesson to make sex better, because that's what I do here on this channel. If you don't already subscribe, why not? You should subscribe. Click the link below and subscribe to this channel. Whether or not you're into cuckolding, this is not the only thing I talk about. In fact, this is the first time I've ever talked about it, and it may be the last. We shall see. All right, enough of that. Let's get started. Cuckold fantasy is the idea of your romantic partner, usually wife or girlfriend, having sex with another man, often in front of you while you watch. Mm, brrr, kinky, right? And as I said before, is a super common fantasy. So let's examine why. Well, number one, I think that it reinforces the idea that our partner is sexually desirable, that other men want her, that she is sexually vivacious and alive, and that it is fun to watch her be sexual. It can also revive sex in a relationship, especially a long-term partnership. Bringing in another person can be really exciting and can really spice things up in a big way. Also, this is taboo, especially in our society, which is very heterosexual and very monogamous. Having another man in the bedroom at all and breaking the rules of monogamy and marriage by your wife having sex with another man with your permission is taboo and kinky in all of these delicious ways. It's also kinky in the sense that there's this sort of power dynamic at play, or there certainly can be. You can be kind of the helpless man whose wife is having sex with another man, or you can be the powerful director man who's telling him exactly how to do it. We'll get more into that one before the end of the video. Finally, there's some other things that are pretty arousing about cuckolding too, like the sense of voyeurism. Watching two people have sex is hot. It also kind of smells of group sex, like there's multiple people in the room engaged in sex acts. So if you're sort of aroused by group sex, but you're not ready to go to the orgy dome, or if you're sort of aroused by voyeurism and you want to watch your wife make a live porno show just for you, cuckolding might just be the answer. And one of my favorite potential reasons that you might be into cuckolding is say your wife or girlfriend has a voracious sexual appetite. Women have big libidos. Women can be unleashed and sexually desirous and it can take multiple men to please one woman remember women can have multiple orgasms i mean she can basically go and go and go and go and go and she can tend to outlast several men and so sometimes enlisting the help of another man in order to really please your woman is exactly what the doctor ordered this doctor in this case being dr caitlin v who's not a doctor and dropped out of her doctorate so that she could talk about cuckolding on youtube oh the irony that if i wasn't here talking to you i would have been a doctor but because i'm not a doctor i get to talk to you about cuckolding which is like my live stream anyway Thanks for tuning in. All right, how to do it. Let's talk about making this juicy fantasy juice for you. Before we do anything else, we gotta talk about how this is not shameful or wrong. If you're having some feelings come up as you're watching this video and you're thinking, oh my God, I'm kind of into that, but it shouldn't be, that's wrong, it's bad, it's dirty or whatever, I just want you to suspend that for a moment. Let's all just take a deep breath. <sighs> <sighs> Fantasies are not inherently shameful, bad, or wrong. They're just fantasies. 
And there's nothing inherently moral about having sex with other people, as long as they're all consenting adults. Therefore, if you're having some feelings about this, that's perfectly okay. Borrow my confidence if you don't have it for yourself. This is not dirty, shameful, bad, or wrong. This is a perfectly normal and very common thing, and it's okay for you to want to explore it. It's also okay if you don't want to explore it. That is perfectly reasonable too, and you definitely don't have to, and you can just skip to the next video in my channel and I will not be hurt. But if you're even a little bit interested, I challenge you to keep watching because I'm gonna tell you how to make this fantasy hot even if you never have or allow another man to touch your wife ever, why not use this fantasy to make your sex life better? Because dang it, I want you to have the best sex of your life. And sometimes that requires having an open mind. So stick with me. Step one, you guessed it. It's communicate, duh. Make sure that both you and your partner want to explore this fantasy. If it is a turn off for her, it's probably not gonna end up being more of a turn on for you because a turned off partner is not a great lover. So communicate, talk about it. You knew I was gonna say that, didn't you? You knew it. If you've ever seen another video, you know step one is often communicate. Step two, fantasize. After you know that you're both into the idea of cuckolding, now you get to enter the rich and wonderful world of fantasizing about it before you bring in another person into the situation. So you can fantasize about this in a couple different ways. Number one, you could talk about it outside of a sexual context. Like, is that something you'd be interested in doing? What would be hot about that for you? What would you want to see happen? You can talk about it inside of a sexual context. It can be a part of your dirty talk. You could could be having a sexual encounter and then begin to whisper in her ear, hey, if I was another man, this would be this. Imagine that you're with another man right now and I'm watching you from across the room. Imagine that the feeling of my body against yours is actually that hot guy that we saw at the bar earlier. Imagine that I'm actually over there while he's having his way with you. See if that feels arousing to both of you. And if it does, I highly recommend that you take that fantasy one step further by engaging a sex toy. Now the sex toy can actually take the place of the other man. So you could be across the room watching your wife or girlfriend play with herself with a sex toy, imagining or speaking out the fantasy that there's another man there with her. All of these will help you to determine whether or not cuckolding is actually for you. Because as you're doing this fantasy, it might be really, really hot, but you might realize that you don't actually want to see her have sex with another man. And that's perfectly fine. That's the purpose of the fantasy. And the fantasy can be super hot. That on itself might actually improve the sex that both of you are having by introducing this fictional third party. All right, after the waters have been tested and you both have done some internal work to make sure that this is the right move for you, comes the time to plan. Now planning begins with the two of you first discussing your boundaries. What do you absolutely not want to happen? So it may be that you do not want to watch her have anal sex with him. Anal sex is off the table, that's a boundary for you. Great. Maybe you don't want to watch him choke her. You don't want to watch him get super rough with her and that includes choking for you. Perfect. Another example of a great boundary might be that they only have sex with a condom and only while you are there in the room. If for any reason you need to leave the room, the action stops. She might also have some boundaries, like she might not want him to do specific things or she might not want you to do specific things and she gets to ask for those too. You might even want to ask her to save that special ball licking thing she does just for you. Knowing what will or will not bother you in advance by doing some, again, thought work will be very helpful during this part. Next, we are going to plan to find the stud or the bull, the guest star in this cuckold fantasy. It's useful to consider whether or not you want to bring in someone who you already know, in which case you can approach a friend or a single guy that you know and ask him, or do you want this to be someone who you don't know, who you don't have an ongoing relationship with, and they're just a special guest star, maybe this one time, or if we like it, maybe two or three times, but we're not gonna develop a relationship beyond that. If that's the case, I highly recommend that you go to a website such as FetLife, or look for someone who you already know is interested in playing the guest star in your relationship. Of course, picking up a stud at the bar can be fun. It might be something I've done myself, 
but you'll have to be really, really clear with that person what the expectations are. She might say to him, hey, I wanna take you home and have sex with you while my husband watches. And that gives him the opportunity to give it a thumbs up or thumbs down. He'll probably wanna meet you both first, and this is excellent, this is a good sign. The three of you need to communicate this third guy is also gets to have boundaries. He's going to have some boundaries and you got to ask what those are and respect those as well. And then finally, all three of you should have and agree upon a safe word. I really like the words yellow and red. Yellow is things are getting too close to the edge of my comfort zone and we need to pull back a little bit. Caution. And red is stop, full out stop, everybody stop, let's put our clothes back on and process and talk about what our next steps are going to be. And then finally, aftercare. After all is said and done, what does everybody need? Maybe she wants cuddles from both men. Maybe the three of you are gonna hang out and talk about what was awesome about that. I highly recommend hanging out afterward and talking about what was awesome, what was so hot, what was your favorite part? This helps to prevent our little brains from going into like shame and terror mode and going, oh my God, I can't believe I just did that. I broke my marriage vows. Or like, whatever your panic brain is saying to you, Remember, those are just thoughts, they're not true. The, all of your feelings are valid, but not all of your thoughts are true, right? And so by having a conversation about what went well and what we really liked, we can actually anchor in that that was fun, that was pleasurable, we enjoyed it, and keep the like monkey mind out of there. And then finally, check in with everybody after a couple days, maybe on a group text. Check in with the bull, make sure that he's still feeling good and satisfied, check in with your wife, and check in with yourself. Making sure that everybody is still pleased and satisfied, and maybe see if we all wanna to arrange to do it again. All right, a couple really, really important things to consider, which is what if I change my mind in the middle of the scene and I wanted to stop? Well, that's why we have the safe word. That is perfectly fine. Any of the three of you can call it at any time. Put your clothes back on and get back together in a way that is going to feel healthy and safe and healing. But of course, if you follow this guidance and you follow my next piece of guidance, that should not have to happen, but understand it's okay if it does. Another common what if is what if something develops between that guy and my wife? Well, this is a common fear and it's not unreasonable. And that is why we make a plan and set the boundaries, which can include boundaries around communication. Like, this guy's only gonna be our guest star in our bedroom one night and we're not gonna communicate with him at all any after that. I promise you, if something does happen, it's not because of that guy, it's because the two of you were not in a solid relationship before you entered into this cuckold fantasy, which brings me to the third what if, which is what if introducing the cuckold makes things worse in our relationship? Well, before you enter into a cuckolding fantasy and before you bring anyone else into the bedroom, whether that's group sex, a threesome, non-monogamy, whatever, before you do any of that, the two of you need to be in a super stable, healthy, non-toxic relationship. The two of you have got to be solid or else throwing a wrench in the work is going to understandably and predictably mess some stuff up. The two of you do not feel solid, secure, and certain in your bond together. Do not bring other people into the bedroom. And then finally, there are some people for whom cuckolding is just not a good fit. These are people that are anxiously attached in their relationship, deal with a lot of relationship insecurity, are not good at planning or thinking about the details, and finally are looking at another person to fix their relationship and not to add to their relationship. If that describes you, you've got some work to do before you can bring other people into the bedroom with the exception of talking it out during sex that you're just having with your wife or partner. So if you are thinking about cuckolding as a fantasy, or even if you're not, you just wanna spice up your sex life tonight, here's what I recommend. Try it out by talking it out first, introducing it into your sexual fantasy life. If it's a go from both parties, arrange to have a bull or a stud meet with you in your bedroom, have sex with your wife while you enjoy, whether you're enjoying from a sort of disempowered beta perspective of just getting into the kinkiness of kind of not being in control and not being dominant or if you want to control the action and tell that guy exactly how to get with your wife you can enjoy it from a dominant perspective too all right cuckolding it can be hot it can be fun it comes down to making sure through sexual fantasy that it's something you both want to do doing an excellent job of planning 
picking the right co-star to come into the bedroom with you, setting the appropriate boundaries to make sure that we decrease the chance of anyone getting hurt or feeling anything uncomfortable during the entire experience. And if you are a person that feels insecurity in your relationship, maybe just bring it in as a fantasy before you consider adding another person into the bedroom. But there's no reason that you can't use this fantasy tonight to make your sex life even juicier. I encourage you to try, especially if you're one of those six out of 10 men or one out of three women that's into it. Go forth and enjoy.